10 random magic cards rated day number 128. We're really getting up there, aren't we, guys? Let's see what the first card of the day is. Teamer Battle Rage from Fate Reforged. That's the set that was up when uh, you know, SBMTG got started. So that's kind of fun. Two mana, if one in a red for an instant. Target creature gains double strike till end of turn, but there's more. Ferocious creature also gains trample till end of turn if you control a creature with power four or greater. So you can cast it on a four drop. Trample double strike. Um, crazy. <laughs> really, really still good, man. Very, very good. You know what's funny is when I look back on Teamer Battle Rage in my mind, I completely forgot about the Ferocious ability, <laughs> which kind of makes the card like way, way better because, you know, even if your guy gets blocked, you're still going, you're still going in for a million damage, like an Ember Cleave. Um, Battle Rage, is, it's still good, dude. It really is. I'm going to give Battle Rage... A 5.2, mostly because of its playability in like constructed environments. But again, role player, only certain decks are going to play it, like blindingly fast aggro decks that can get a four power creature, right? So, I, you know, it's, it's pretty narrow, but in its applications, it's like one of the best cards for what it does. <laughs> you know, and it's it still kind of is in some ways. So. It's going to seem high to some people, especially for the first card of the day, but I still respect Teamer Battle Rage, and I think you should too. I think you should too. But card number two is Freed from the Real. Really cool art here by Fisher. This is three mana, two and a blue for an enchant creature. You can pay a black, or pay a black. It's right there on the card, blue. You can pay a blue and tap enchanted creature, or you can pay a blue and untap enchanted creature. Uh, you know what you're doing with this? Combos. You're doing combos baby is what is what you're doing uh, that's why this card's like five bucks if you get the list one it's three dollars masters 25 is like 330 secret layer drops 10 bucks don't do that but you know the one from saviors is still five dollars perfect example of you know a pretty crappy card that we didn't play like way back in the day that has a brand new life in commander man and the card has been important in commander for a very long time um again this is a casual commander vibe we're trying to set up here in the series you know we're mostly rating for normal not sweaty commander players and i'm sorry if you're sweaty i'm sweaty too but it's like you know normal i just want to hang out with my friends you know pop something cold open maybe make some popcorn or cook some ribs or something we'll make some burgers we'll order some pizza we'll hang out at the dining room table play a little commander whatever like that's what i'm that's mostly what i'm rating for you know um and with that in mind, this card is bonkers. I, there might be some CEDH combos with this, just in the game too, because it's mostly what you're doing with the card. It's ending the game with ridiculous cop, you know, combos that allow you to untap this guy with a righteous activated ability. <laughs> you tap him, untap him, tap him, untap him, tap him, untap him, and you're just making infinite mana most of the time because you can attach it to a creature that makes more than one mana, and then you just get infinite mana. Easy, easy. <laughs> like, that was that was an oversight from Wizards of the Coast, but still. Um, this is a great card for the format that I'm mostly talking about here. So I'm going to give this a, uh, solid 6.5 <laughs> a little expensive, but you know, kind of the set piece of some of the best combos in the whole format, or at least the wildest combos 6.5 might seem like low to some people, but as a role player that really only does the one thing, super narrow application, relatively fragile can be screwed with even if you actually pull it off right there's a lot of safety valves there's a lot of checks you have to get through and hurdles you have to jump over before you can nail them with freed from the real but still um th those things decrease its overall score but the fact that like so many unbelievable in-game states are available to you because of this one stupid common <laughs> this forgotten common from an old set is just pretty inspiring so i'm gonna i'm gonna give it a decent score uh six and a half well, we'll move on to Biomantic Mastery from Dissension over here. Seven mana, four, and then two, uh, three Simic Hybrids for a sorcery. Draw a card for each creature target player controls, then draw a card for each creature another target player controls. So, that's, that's pretty good. Um, seven mana is too much, obviously. But, you know, maybe you target yourself and then the opponent at the table with the most creatures, right, because you're playing Commander. And you end up drawing, like, nine cards. <laughs> it can pretty easily happen. Especially if somebody at the table is on tokens or something. It can pretty easily happen. Um, I like this, dude. I still like this. I still like it. I will give... I will give this. I will, What am I going to give this? I'm going to ask the audience, first of all. This will be my Ask the Audience of the Day. What do you give a 7-mana draw 6? 
a seven mana draw a ten. You know, like wh- wh- what do you what do you give that card? It's sorcery speed. Not to say it's great, but I will give this card a four point eight four. Um, and I actually think that's a little low. I really think that's low, but I guess my justification here is that in both colors, I think there are just better ways to draw cards. For the most part, there's better ways to draw cards, but you know, if you're looking to draw all the cards at one time, like this will help you do that. So <laughs> four point four point eight, I think is about right. We'll move on to Dragon Speaker Shaman over here from Scourge. This is three mana, one and two red for a two two human shaman barbarian. Uh, dragon spells you cast cost two less to cast. So, what is it? Dragon, dragon speaker, dragon shaman servant, something like that. There's like a two drop guy uh, that that makes all your dragon spells cost one less to play. So you pay one more mana, you get this guy. This is all. This they cost two less to play. <laughs> Pretty sick though, because you know you drop this guy on three, and let's just assume he survives. You probably shouldn't, but I'm just assuming he survives. I mean, you drop a land next turn, you can play a six drop dragon on turn four, presumably. That's pretty good. I mean, this dude just goes in all the dragon decks, right? Like, if you're building dragons in command, you just play the one of this guy. You kind of can't get around that. So, you know, this has the same problem with most, like, creature type matters cards where I have to rate it outside of a vacuum and mostly talk about the one deck that it goes in. In that deck, it's like a 5.5, you know? But, like, mostly this card's like a 4.4. It's something like a four even. I don't think it's that amazing, but in Dragon's decks, yeah, I have to give this like a 5.5. This is really, really good. Effectively, mana production for a deck like that. Your opponent's more or less obligated to burn a removal spell on this. But they will. <laughs> You'll learn that. They will. <laughs> so, not sure it's amazing, but for the Dragon's decks, it's half incredible. Although, I might just rather play a rock on turn three. You know? Like, Rock is, I think, like, way more guaranteed to stick around to the next turn, but I don't know, it's just me. Um, I stick by my rating of 5.5 in Dragon's decks. Next is Auditory Ambush from the Assassin's Creed set. Four mana, two black, blue for a sorcery. Choose one or both. Return target creature to its owner's hand. You better do a lot better than an unsummoned, dude. Target player searches their library and or graveyard for a card named Ezio, Blade of Vengeance, reveals it, puts it into their hand. If they search their library, this way they shuffle. So, sorcery speed, four mana unsummon go get Ezio that seems awful <laughs> I guess you're tutoring for a guy in commander but it still seems it still seems like so bad <laughs> I like when they um when they tune UB cards like universes beyond cards like this like yeah yeah people who are into this property you get to like this card okay you, you get your your Spider-Man card, or your Ezio card, or your like Tifa card from Final Fantasy, which I'm excited about Final Fantasy and all that. But like the card's not good. <laughs> you know, I kind of like that design philosophy. Everyone's worried that like you know two years from now, Arena is just going to be like Sonic the Hedgehog versus Luke Skywalker in the arena or whatever. And like my thought is that I hope they keep making UB to be just not even good enough to be played. <laughs> That's what I really hope. But that won't happen. That absolutely won't happen. Either way, this card's bad. Um, 1.7. I guess it's a two for one, but at what cost? At really, at what cost? You know, <laughs> Nest is Restless Bivouac from uh, Wilds of Bell Drain. Bivouac is a land that ETBs tapped. It's not hard to pronounce. Everyone seems to have such problem pronouncing this guy. Bivouac. Marge Bouvier. Restless Bivouac. You see? Land. That NTB enters stat. For some reason, I have a problem pronouncing enters. That's my that's my brain. Tap it and add a red or a white. You can also pay one red white to have Bivouac become a two two red and white ox creature token till end of turn. It's still a lamb. Whenever Restless Bivouac attacks, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. You see, if you pronounce it correctly, you get to have bars while you're reading. Whenever Restless Bivouac attacks, it's sick. <laughs> I just like the way it comes out. You know, there's a good flow to it. But uh, this is a good creature land, man. Um. Oddly, you don't see it too much in standard, right? Because like the Boros Mice deck, the Boros Imidane's Recruiter deck, like they just don't want, they're allergic to tap lands. They don't often play those. But you'll often see it in like the red-white Sunfall deck that plays like um, Urbrass Forge and stuff like that. That's usually where this pops up. It's a solid creature land, dude. Creature lands in general are going to get like a 5.1 from me most days. This one's no different. Don't care that it comes into play tapped. A creature land that produces two colors of mana is just kind of insane in and of itself. So I'll give the card a 5.3. Stop me. You absolutely can't. 
<laughs> Moving on to Geth's summons over here from Pyrexia, all will be one commander. This is four mana, two and two black for a sorcery. Return up to one target creature card from your yard to the battlefield for four mana. That's a zombify, but it also has corrupted. For each opponent who has three or more poison counters, as you cast this spell, put up to one target creature card from that player's yard onto the battlefield. <laughs> Under your control. Okay, so if anybody has poison counters, you get their guys too. If they have three or more. Um, this just becomes like reanimate from every yard if you've been able to spread the love in terms of poison. But I don't think that's ever really going to happen. I think it's actually kind of tough to make work, but I don't know. Maybe you use this spell to get a Tyranax Rex out of your yard, and that will give an opponent more poison counters. And then next time you cast guest summons... They'll have poison counters because you use the first one to get a huge dude that puts poison on him. You get what I'm getting at here. I still think it's just kind of like mostly better zombify. Like it's a little bit harder to cast, so you can't say it's strictly better zombify. But it is mostly better zombify, which is pretty good territory to be in. So four point. What well, what would I give zombify? Right, like a four point five. So I'll just give this a four point five as well. I think it's probably like about where we're at. We'll move on to. Uh, the heck is this no mercy you you are called that aren't you yes you are no mercy for Merz's legacy i can't read these like invocation titles this is four mana two and two black for an enchantment whenever a creature successfully deals damage to you destroy it <laughs> you can't get a copy of this card for less than ten dollars because it's so disgusting <laughs> it's a pretty ridiculous line of text on this thing right i mean come on <laughs> you just don't see that every day. They've never actually reprinted it, right? We got it in Dominaria Remastered. I will give them that. We did get it in Dominar Dominaria Remastered. But we probably won't get a reprint of this card into, like, you know, a, a, like Modern, for instance. <laughs> or Pioneer or anything like that. Because uh, it's so stupid and hard to deal with. And kind of a massive headache and very irritating. So, whew, um, God, what do you give a card like this? What do you give a commander bomb like No Mercy? Um, ask, ask the audience. Had to think about it for a second. Ask the audience on this one. Uh, crap. I guess me taking some time on it gives you some time to think about what you would score it. I will give this a 7.6. It's just, it's just this massively splashy effect. It's just this super annoying effect, dude. I think, I think we have to give it at least that. 7.6? Is that, is that okay with everybody? Is that okay with everybody? I'm going to do it. Next is Fey Wild Caretaker from Commander Legends Battle for Baldur's Gate. This is five mana, four and a blue for a three, four orc wizard. When it ETBs, you take the initiative. Okay, at the beginning of your end step, if you have the initiative, create a 1-1 one, one blue fairy dragon creature token with flying. So this actually puts four power and on two bodies into play, but it still feels pretty drafty to me. 2.2, uh, something like that. Move on to the final card of the day. It's Bottle Golems, not Bottle Gnomes. It's Bottle Golems. Four mana for a 3-3 three, three Golem. It's an artifact creature with trample. When it dies, you gain life equal to its power. So a little bit like Bottle Gnomes, but you could just sack Bottle Gnomes. For three life. This you have to find a way for it to die. <laughs> but it's a hill giant, right? It's a four mana, three, three. But they slap trample onto it. Any deck can play it. The life gain ability is fine. But again, this is a bit drafty. And is meant more as a nod. A reverent reference to, you know, a card that a lot of us love very much. Um, I'm going to give Bottle Gnomes. Bottle Gnomes. Bottle Golems. A uh, 2.9. I think we'll give this. That sounds about right to me. But can't wait to see what adventures we go on tomorrow, everybody. I'll see you then. Bye!